Hi everyone, it's Tara with Secret Bee Studio, and I'm here with a much requested tutorial video for this super simple but beautiful fold and pocket mini album. The first album was made using the gorgeous Simple Stories Wildflower Collection, and in this new mini tutorial, I will be using the fabulous Simple Stories Simple Vintage Berry Fields Collection. This album measures five inches tall by five inches wide when it's all folded up and unfolds to about 13 and a half inches long. I'll show you how to create this cute little mini with all of its fold outs and a pocket. To create the album, you will need three pieces of patterned paper that are all five inches tall, but with varied lengths. Make sure when cutting the patterned paper for the cover and the third page that the patterns are in the right direction on both sides as you will see both. Not so much for the pocket page. The first piece of pattern paper is for the cover of the album and it measures 5 inches tall by 7 inches long. Place this piece on the scoreboard with the long edge at the top and your cover pattern facing up. Score at 1 half inch, 3 quarter inch, and 4 and 1 half inches. The second piece of pattern paper is 5 inches tall by 8 and a half inches long, and this will be our pocket page. Again, only the front pattern orientation for this page is important because the back side will become the inside of the pocket. Place this piece on the scoreboard with the long edge at the top and the pattern you want showing facing up. Score right in the center at 4 and 1 quarter inches. The third piece of pattern paper is 5 inches tall by 9 and 3 quarter inches long. Place this on your scoreboard with the long edge at the top and the inside pattern of the page facing up. But it's very important to remember that the pattern on the back of this paper will be flapped over and that is the pattern you will see when the album is closed. Score this piece at 1 half inch, 3 quarter inches, and 5 and 3 quarter inches. After scoring, fold on all of the score lines using a bone folder if you want for a nice crisp edge. And this is how your completed album will fit together. Apply adhesive to the one half inch section or the very right edge of the front cover on the inside and adhere the left edge of the pocket page to that. Then apply adhesive to the inside one half inch section or the very left edge of the last page and adhere the right edge of the pocket page to that. Before adhering the pocket together, you can punch an opening at the top of the front just to make it easier to see what's inside. I use a two inch hexagon shape for mine, but you could use a circle or whatever shape you desire. Flip the album over and apply adhesive in an L shape on one side of the inside of the pocket. I use one half inch score tape on mine, but you can increase or decrease how much adhesive you want in yours depending on what size you want your pocket to be. Then simply fold the pocket together to adhere. I add a decorative edge to the inside fold of the cover and the back page using a scallop punch. You could always leave these edges straight if you wish. To create the turning embellishment for the inside flap of the cover, you will need a small brad and an embellishment that is large enough to cover the brad and hold the flap down, but not so large that it interferes with the closing of the cover page. Figure out where you want the embellishment placed to cover the flap and where the brad will be placed so that the embellishment rotates. The prongs of the brad will be on the front cover, but I will show you how to cover them in a later step. Mark the spot for the brad and then poke a small hole. I placed my brad approximately 3 8 of an inch from the right side score line of the inside cover. Place your brad and then use a strong adhesive like glossy accents to adhere the embellishment to the brad. Be sure to let it dry completely before attempting to spin it. 
Decide on the front cover decorations and embellishments, and then use foam adhesive to pop everything up so that it covers the brad prongs that are showing. Make sure when you are applying the foam adhesive that you leave plenty of room for the prongs and where they will spin on the cover. I decide to adhere a bit of pattern paper to the cover first before I adhere my main embellishment that is popped up. Then I add another small embellishment off to the side to cover the prongs. Then I just go ahead and finish decorating and embellishing the front cover. This part of the video just shows me completing the inside of the front cover. You can always skip ahead to the next part if you wish. I layer in stickers, chipboard, and decorative brads to the top of the flap, and then cut down some 2x2 two two journal cards for the inside of the flap, along with a layered chipboard piece. I add any piece of pattern paper to the inside of the cover along with some stickers under the spinning embellishment. I could have planned out this section a bit better and applied those stickers before I put the brad and spinning embellishment on just to make it easier, but sometimes you just don't know what you're going to do. It took a little extra work, but I did it. On the pocket page, I add embellishments on the right side so that they hang over the edge and can be seen when the album is closed. Once those are adhered, I just layer in more bits and pieces, a journal card, stickers, and enamel dots. The pieces that hang over will show on the back side of the pocket page, but we will cover most of that with more embellishments. Also, on the back side of the pocket page, I add in a layered chipboard element that will hold a decorative card. I add two layers of pattern paper strips in an L shape on the left edge and bottom of this element just to pop it up a tiny bit. Enough for the decorative card to slide in and out but still be held in place. You could use foam adhesive but it may not hold your card tightly or you're going to have to have more than one decorative card. My decorative card is three and a half inches wide by four inches long to fit under the element and still fit on the page. Cut yours accordingly. I cut the base out of pattern paper and then cut two slightly smaller pattern paper pieces for each side of the card. Once those were all adhered together, I added in my embellishments. For the back page flap front side, I cut out a tag from the collection and adhered that along with stickers, bits and pieces, and decorative brads. I dressed up the inside of the back page with an additional piece of pattern paper 
and then stapled a decorative element to the top left and popped up an element on the bottom so that a photo can be slipped behind both. For the inside of the back flap, I cut out a journal element and scored it one quarter inch from the top to form a flip up. Adhere the flip and then add in more decorative touches to the front and the back of the flip. You will see when I show the completed album that I did decorate and embellish under the flip as well. To stuff the pocket of this album, I used some of the amazing ephemera cards of the collection and simply added pattern paper to the back along with more decorative embellishments. I think it's always a good idea to add items or pictures in different widths and heights to a pocket for a great visual interest. And here's this pretty little album completed. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned some new techniques today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!